I believe in Norm Smith's definition of success, which is, it isn't what you achieve. It's what you should achieve with what you have. If rain won't change. You had the reputation of being a, a tough player in your playing years. Did you ever have a punch up on the field then? Oh, never, never. Oh, never. come on. <laughs> if the rain won't change my heart. At all. And you probably don't even know what I'm talking about, do you? That's bloody right. The snow won't change your mind. Let it fall. Hey, how many kicks have you got? You give me possession and I'll shut up. The snow. I'd like to thank Mum and Dad for putting me on this planet with the right set of genes in the right place at the right time. I think my footy life could be summed up like this. I've swanned around a bit. I've made a few blues. I've hopped into life like a demon. Go knees. Give him hell. But that's me. I like football. The most beautiful tribute there from our editor, Connor Brady, for a wonderful man who enjoyed a wonderful life and gave us a wonderful career and so much to be thankful for. It is Ronald Dale Barassi we're remembering for much of today, 87 years of age, passing away yesterday. And as we uh, reflect on the life of Ron Barassi, we also look back on two powerful games that are getting towards the pointy end of September and two preliminary finals that we'll also preview as well. But as we say welcome to the panel, Damien Barrett, you would have had a lot to do with the great man over the journey. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to, TJ, and without doubt, the greatest name in the VFL, AFL history, the, the legend of the legends. Um, as a North Melbourne supporter growing up in North Melbourne in the 70s, there was no one bigger and never was anyone ever bigger after that. And then had the, the good fortune to work really closely with him when he was coaching the Swans when I was living in Sydney. And there's not a nicer man I've come across in my time in the game for what it's worth. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think that's fair. I think that's fair, a fair comment and I think that's something that we'll hear and we'll certainly hear that from one of his uh, disciples in just a moment. The great Sam Kekovic will be joining us live. Isaac Smith, great to have you back here. Oh, thanks for having me, Tony. You met Ron Barassi? I did and I feel a little bit underqualified talking about him but he was such a great of a game and touched so many parts of Australia and I was lucky enough when I was about 15 he came to Cootamundra where I grew up for Australia Day and uh, Dad had the opportunity to show him around for the day and take him back to Wagga to the airport and uh, I was in his back pocket the whole day and let's just say for the whole next week I got a footy education from Dad on how big and how important he was to the game so uh, yeah you just think back on those memories you see that overlay and uh, it's pretty special to know that you had time with him but there are so many people in this footy community and footy world that have been touched by Ron Barassi. And Matthew Lloyd, uh, Ron Barassi provided a, a sliding doors moment for you. He did. I only got to meet Ron a couple of times, TJ, but uh, Ron was the coach of my father, John, uh, in, at Carlton between 1965 and 1967. And uh, my dad had played 29 games and, uh, and got injured, then got best on ground seven weeks in a row for the Carlton Reserves. The halfback flank where my dad played got injured, and, and Ron brought the full forward from the twos up to play halfback flank instead of my dad. And so my dad left the club and uh, some Carlton people walk up to me and say, but only Barassi played your father a few more times. You might have gone to Carlton under the father-son rule. So, but my dad has great things to say about Ron. Yeah. And Nathan Brown, uh, what Ron did for the actual game? Well, like Isaac, I...
I learned about Ron through my old man who always goes back to the 1970 grand final and he changed the course of the game at half time. 44 points down and he said just handball at all costs which now has become a big part of the game. We saw the Giants last night handball they were, uh, in the first half were outstanding and Ron changed that and it's been for 50 years that we've over handballed now because of that half and Teddy Hopkins kicked four in the second half so I learned about him through my old man as well. One man who saw the genius of Ron Barassi firsthand. He was there for the uh, the ingenuity. He was there for the sprays at Arden Street. He joins us live now, Sam Kekovic. G'day, Keka. G'day, Tony. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm going well, thanks. Well, first of all, commiserations. You stayed pretty close to Ron throughout the journey, and I guess in the past six months you may have seen him uh, from time to time. I did indeed. And, uh, look, the great man... And I heard all the tributes uh, that were accorded to him and, and you could go on and on, but he was such a humble, gracious, you know, modest person. You couldn't believe for all his achievements. His uh, focus was always on the broader picture and on others, not himself. It's almost beyond comprehension. But I was listening to also some of the, uh, some of the sprays that you're alluding to. <laughs> now, let me tell you, I hope all the HR departments of this country <laughs> certainly won't be watching this, but those tirades of invective and unbridled abuse that he could impose on you, <laughs> let me assure you, I'll still have those I'll still have those nightmares about three or four in the morning when I wake up. <laughs> and I won't be convinced that he's gone until I actually see it drifting off. <laughs> he did it for the greater good, though, didn't he, uh, Kirk? I mean, he, he rode you, he rode the, the greats of the game, but he did it for the betterment of the individual, uh, at least by way of his, uh, his own input into those situations. Is that a fair call? Oh, indeed so. That was his major focus. I always... Look, I summed up Barass. There are two words that best depict the spirit and the essence of the Australian character, and they are fair dinkum. You wouldn't meet a more fair dinkum bloke ever, a true Australian in every conceivable phrase of the word or the meaning of the word. And uh, look, I remember when I first met him, he had that, in, you know, that uh, intangible quality called presence. You know, you wouldn't have to say a word, but you could feel him there. He was uh, just a unique individual, and as you, like, you rightfully pointed out, his major focus, he, liked to, he derived all his enjoyment out of seeing his charges get the very best out of himself and the overall team success. It was never about him, which is amazing when you consider his profile and his status. Uh, you should to think how others, when you look at others, lesser lights, who, you know, think it is about themselves. Kekka, some of his dress sense uh, there as a coach, uh, he looked a pretty trendy dresser. Talk us through what he was like off the field uh, Ron Barassi, as a person. Lloydie, well, I think you're the last person who should be talking about wardrobes. <laughs> <laughs> look, uh, look, he, had a, he did have a flair for fashion, there's no doubt about that. You've seen those big collars that he yeah. used to wear on the yeah. shirts, the wings. The winglets, though, are the 70s trend. And, of course, the flared pants. He was a bit of a trendsetter, Barassi, in those days, even though he'd, you know, he'd want to sort of give you the impression he was a more frugal person. But every now and again, away from the mainstream, he would sort of splash out and be very comfortable in that, uh, the A-listers as they call them now, the influencers. <laughs> All coaches had their favourites. Were you one of his favourites? And if it wasn't you, who was his favourite at the Kangaroos? Oh, look, I don't think he, he isolated. Look, a lot of people say that I was because I was a bit of a whipping boy like Norm Smith used him. I think Blighty also, I always remembered Oh, look, I've got no idea. They, they, they resonate through my mind every minute when I think of him. Uh, you know, his favourite saying was, you know, you know, don't think of that talented son. That's come out of the eye of your old man's appendage. The rest <laughs> you've got to do yourself. And bloody, for God's sake, centre the ball. You know, what are you doing on the boundary line? This after he thread about nine through the eye of a needle. <laughs> he used to, you know, used to incur... He used to incur his eye like, you know, used to... His temperature used to rise to volcanic proportions because I think he was harder on the naturally skilled players as opposed to someone like himself who was totally driven and, you know, got to the mountaintop from base camp through sheer hard work. And I think he was a lot harder on the naturally talented, gifted players. Uh, Keke, just before we... That he was... Uh, he was uh... Yeah. No. 
Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, just before we let you go, um, quite often when people, you know, well-known people pass, we talk about, oh, we should strike a medal, we should strike this, we should pay tribute in this manner. And there have been calls before Ron's passing, years earlier, about the Premiership Cup being named after Ron Barassi. Is that, is that a no-brainer? Look, I was asked this question numerous times. It's probably a no-brainer, but is that big enough? A big enough recognition? I reckon you could rename the country after Barassi. <laughs> yeah, they want to change the course of our history. Well, why don't you piss that off and name Australia Barassi country? I reckon it would be unanimous. We wouldn't have to have a referendum. I can guarantee you. I don't know what more you could do, Tony, that the Premiership Cup is certainly apt. Uh, anything else? I don't know. Uh, Whatever you do, don't ask the politicians in this country, please. No, exactly. And just as uh, we just as we do let you go, Kekka, just give us 20 seconds of your, your your finest about Ron Barassi, the man, and how you'll miss him. Now listen. Oh well, how will I miss him, God? <laughs> well, <laughs> people always regarded Ron as a great, great orator, fire and brimstone, which he was a great motivator. But I always loved uh, Barass for his soft side. He had a great wit. He enjoyed a turn of, uh, turn of phrase. Uh, he liked to recite history. And I always remember I saying to Ron, I said, Ron, and Ron, everything was black and white for those that knew Ron. There was no grey area with Ron. And if you had an argument contrary to his, you'd better stack up pretty good. And if your politics sort of differed a bit, well, Ron, I said to Ron one day, I said, hey, you're voting, Ron? I said, you remember Karl Marx is dead. You can't vote for Karl anymore. He's gone. <laughs> Because you know what he was like uh, in that regard, politics, he was always worried about, he was a champion of the people. Uh, and I'll remember him in that regard. Certainly I, re I can't forget some of the sprays because, let me tell you, if the contemporary player was subject to that, there wouldn't be a HR department that could adjudicate on it, I'm telling you now. But uh, he was a large, he was a behemoth of a man and he was someone that I was absolutely privileged and deeply honoured to have had the tutelage and the director, the, the directorship of him and uh, ironically enough everyone that played under him whether it be Carlton or whoever's path they crossed their lives were enriched and went on to bigger and better things so yeah we're going to miss the great man but you know through the passage of time his legacy is assured yeah terrific stuff well spoken